So, Onward was a pretty good movie. Not one of my favorites, but I enjoyed it well enough and thought the ending was very sweet and heartfelt. But while the story wasn't perfect, the thing that was really bugging me throughout the movie was the character designs. And to be clear, I don't think the character design work was bad. It clearly used great shape language and color design. But there were some choices that bothered me personally that I wanted to express in this video. Again, keep in mind I am not saying these choices were objectively bad or that it's the worst thing ever. They're just some things that I personally didn't like. Feel free to disagree, and if you have some design critiques of your own, either for my redesigns or for the original designs, I'd love to hear them. So, on to the first redesign. I'm going to start with Ian, our main character. Like most of the redesigns in this video, the changes I'm making are going to be fairly small, but, at least to me, effective. After the trailer for Onward came out, you might have seen this meme or some variant of it floating around online. It's meant to critique the use of the nerdy, messy-haired, pasta-thin, younger male with a big nose trope in big budget animation. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with this trope, per se. It works well enough, especially in Ratatouille and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, but it does get a little tiring to see it used too often, even if unintentionally, as Onward and Will Smith Bird Movie were in production around the same time. Really, my beef with this trope is the nose. I'm sick of it. I am sick of these pasty nerd boys having these freakishly large noses. Ian is the worst offender to me because even though his nose is supposed to be mirroring the shape of his ears to have a sort of design congruity, it's just too darn big. It makes his mouth look squished down with barely any upper lip. As an aside, Kristoff is how you do an unconventional big nose male character design well. He's handsome while maintaining a less traditional look. But the worst bit isn't that the dudes in these other CG movies have them, it's that almost every single character in Onward, be they background character or main character, share this massive sniffer. Look at this. Look at all these background characters with the exact same facial proportions. Despite all the variety in species, they all look like they've got a really bad cold. This directly leads to a world that seems just unappealing and samey. In Monsters, Inc., all of the characters are monsters, but even then, their designs were extremely varied to the point of incredible creativity. Fantasy worlds are normally supposed to evoke a feeling of escapism and wonder, or at least some kind of interesting power fantasy, correct? Well, even in the flashback sequences where this world is supposed to look as appealing as possible, the designs look uncreative and unappealing. The movies used D&D as a basis for inspiration, correct? D&D thrives in its use of fun escapism and huge diversity in design and races. Look at some of these designs. Don't they make you want to dive into this world and explore the story? This made me also think of World of Warcraft and the addition of the Blood Elves to the Horde. Not many people wanted to play Horde because all of the player races were some version of brutish and ugly. Once Blood Elves were added, Horde player count soared. There really wasn't anything wrong with the Horde designs, it's just that most people wanted to live in an escapist fantasy where they were a pretty elf character. So what exactly is so appealing about wanting to be in the world of Onward as compared to D&D or WoW? Look at this wizard from Onward next to these wizards from D&D and WoW. Yeah, it's painfully bland. I feel like it's harder to get invested in the comparison between the past and the present and onward because of the character designs alone. In fact, maybe Ian's big-nosed nerdy appearance would have worked better if the people of the past looked significantly more badass. But as it stands, I'm giving him a smaller nose. I'm also going ahead and adding some other things too, though these really aren't necessary and it's just me spitballing ideas. I decided to give him baggier pants, as if they're hand-me-downs from his brother. Also, to help add to the fantasy element, really make him feel like he's from another world, I gave him a tail like one of those from those Littles books that no one remembers. This is just for fun, and also to help with the design I'm redoing later in the video. I gave him bigger shoes to help express his clumsiness and that he's still growing into his body. I didn't really make too many alterations, but I liked how it turned out. Now, you might think that next I'd be redoing his brother, Barley, but I actually really like Barley's design. I think it's perfect. Wouldn't change a thing. 
So, on to the next character. The Manticore! I really like this design. The way she holds in her wings close to her, has her hair in a ponytail, even wears ill-fitting heels while on the job, really communicate how she's holding herself back and repressing her true desires. Once she regains her dream, her mane is loose and free, and she uses her wings to fly again. The character designers pulled off her personality really well, and impressively made what is traditionally a monster into a likable and personable design. There's just one thing holding me back from thinking it's perfect. These eyes. I don't like them. One bit. And there's a trend I've been noticing in recent Pixar works, and that is this shape design. The extremely close together eyes mixed with the big nose, which leads to a really weird shape and pinched nose bridge. I don't like it. I don't find it appealing. I think it's a big gamble when you make an animated character's eyes so small and close, especially if it's your main character. It can make them much harder to read if done incorrectly, and it, it just looks unappealing in my personal opinion. It's especially a travesty on the manticore, who is supposed to have the head of a lion. Cat noses are wide and flat. Tapering the top of them with such narrow eyes defeats the shape language of a cat, makes her head not even look very lion-esque. Just look at this cat from Soul. It's the first design in this video I'm going to label straight up hideous. In my personal opinion, of course. So for the manticore, all I really changed were her eyes. I also made her lion ears visible when her hair is down because I think that's an important part to communicating her lion features as well. Last but not least, we have the crown jewel of strangeness in this movie, the dad legs. When I first saw the trailer featuring this aspect of the movie, I was a bit weirded out. The concept isn't bad, and the plot of the movie is well done and pays off well, but the fact that his design is literally just a pair of legs evokes uncanniness. It's kinda creepy and dissociates us from the father's character. He feels like an object, which may have been part of the thematic purpose, but I digress. This is why I suggested adding a tail to Ian, because if these elves had tails, then the father would have one too. If his final design remained a pair of legs, a tail would add a new layer of expressiveness to him. I think it'd help a lot. But if I could change more, I'd give him a torso. This would help immensely with body language and hopefully be significantly less strange. I could see someone raise the objection that giving him arms would mean he'd be able to hug Ian before the dramatic conclusion to the movie, which might make his sacrifice less effective. And that's definitely a good point, but I think the sacrifice was more about the ability to talk and reconcile with their father, show how they'd been doing. He might be able to hug his dad, but he still can't communicate or learn from him. That's why Barley's part of the story is still intact. Alright, so that's my thoughts on the designs from Pixar's Onward. If you enjoyed my art, feel free to check out more of it on my Twitter and Instagram below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to check out my Patreon. Thanks!